<laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for coming. And uh, thank you, Senator Ricketts, for not just uh, this particular topic, but uh, Senator Ricketts is a particularly active member on the EPW committee. And uh, I appreciate that because I know you know it being a former governor probably better than some others. So interesting developments, some of them topical today. And some of the, you all have heard me talk about this, but uh, I think this should be in an outrage, really, to every taxpaying citizen. We're talking about the Inflation Reduction Act, which is almost two years old as of uh, this August. And it also, uh, I noticed in the president's schedule that he was getting briefed on the Inflation Reduction Act. So I'm sure he got this briefing while he was uh, being briefed on the Inflation Reduction Act, which we have renamed Invest in Radical Activities Act, because that's what this is about. So we've really been digging into who is getting these massive amounts of grants through the EPA. There's $3 billion in the, um, in the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, uh, that will go for climate, different climate kind of buckets. And in our investigation, uh, we found that a lot of this money that's going out really has little to do with the environment and a lot to do with uh, funding groups that are basically engaged in what I characterize as anti-American uh, activities. They're anti-American, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-police, uh, and anti-border security. So the first one I'm going to go to is, uh, and, and before I do that, I'm also going to say that Vice President uh, Harris, who is now the nominee for the Democrat uh, presidential race, is quoted here, I have put equity at the center of our nation's largest investment in climate in history to reach the organizations that know their community best. That's what she said when they rolled out and actually named these organizations. And interestingly today, there was a news article today saying that the green groups have now formed a coalition today. And guess who they're endorsing for president? Vice President Harris. So let's go over to the following one. I, I say follow the money uh, because I think that's where you find out. The first one is uh, climate justice. It's up on the top right hand bar there, $100 million. Um, they have glorified Hamas uh, in a lot of their um, social media on their websites and other things. Uh, and they think Israel has no right to exist. They're getting $100 million. This is a direct grant to them. Uh, the next one is the NDN um, Collective. Collective. Do you, you know them? Yes, they're a partner. Yes, they on their social media call the United States a so-called country and also call for the defunding of the police and our United States military. Imagine that in these times right now. Next, we have uh, two New York and New Jersey coalitions that are getting $50 million. They're actually going to be participating in granting $50 million. Their quotes are, the border and concept of citizenship is racist and wants no collaboration with federal immigration officials, and the ICE agenda is racist as well. Then we have the social and environmental uh, entrepreneurs, $50 million. Again, abolish police, abolish prisons. The, the latest one, and these were all, those previous ones I'm talking about were all announced in December by the Vice President uh, and named on uh, the EPA's uh, uh, materials as they, as they rolled them out through the press. The Ella Baker Center for um, Human Rights, the most recent funding was announced last week is getting between one and three million dollars. And they are actively advocating to defund police, decriminalize shoplifting, and abolish our prisons. So I think that, uh, that this uncovers quite a bit of the three billion. Uh, we're up to 200 million, actually a little bit more than that. Uh, if, if you count everything all in. And this is just uh, the lack of accountability. The administrator of the EPA has been questioned about this. He says the money hasn't gone out. That's their first, that was their first thing. Well, they haven't gotten the money yet. Now they're saying, well, we don't, we don't uh, check out the partner organizations. So this NDN would be a partner organization as opposed to an actual grantee. So why aren't you vetting these people? I mean, this is taxpayers' dollars. And what do they have to do with... Uh, telling people how to uh, uh, live and cope better and clean up their environment. So I think that we need to know that these are um, 
uh, appalling to me and to many of us who uh, work hard to make sure that we're not just paying our taxes, but we're also making sure that we're making good investments from, from the federal government. So what are we doing about it? Well, we're shining a light on it and urging the EPA to not disperse this money. And, and coincidentally, they haven't dispersed all of this money yet, so we'll see what happens. We're, I pushed in the Appropriations Committee for more money for the EPA Inspector General, somebody to follow the money within the EPA because they know best uh, an inspector general would be able to do that. And then I think the most important thing is when we take control of Congress after January, uh, we will be able to defund a lot of this, but we also be able to follow it and do much more oversight. So I'm going to turn it over to my friend from uh, Nebraska and see his perspective on this. Well, thank you, Senator mm -hmm. Capito, sure. for highlighting this and showing some transparency and some sunlight on what's going on here with regard to these grants through the Inflation Reduction Act. But as you all more aptly named it, the Investment and Radical Activist Act, right. because that's exactly what we're doing here. When you're giving money to organizations like the Climate Justice Alliance, and they are funding the Wash on March, uh, March on Washington, and they are waving the free Palestinian flags and so forth, we're paying them to lobby our government. I got to tell you, everyday Nebraskans don't think that's a good idea, like that our tax dollars should go to radical organizations to lobby our own government. That's just crazy. And you're talking about the NDN collective and the things they want to do, like abolishing the military, abolishing the police, abolishing Customs and Border Protection, abolishing Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Again, everyday Americans think those organizations are important organizations, and we want to keep them to keep us safe. They are way out of step with what everyday Americans want to see. This is really, really radical stuff that they're promoting. And then we have organizations like the uh, uh, social and environmental entrepreneurs who are spreading climate act alarmism and, again, funding left-wing groups. This is not what our tax dollars are supposed to go for. And to your point about the EPA, because all this money is going through the EPA, I was just talking to a company yesterday who said, hey, we need more help with getting permits done. We can't get permits fast enough, frankly, for some of these environmental projects even. And it's because the money is going to fund these radical organizations and not that nobody's paying attention to how many people they've got working in their different regions to be able to help get these permits processed. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, the EPA's got legitimate business they're not getting done. On the other hand, they're funding these radical in, uh, environmentalists and other sorts of organizations. And again, it just gets back to everyday Americans, that's not how they want their money spent. They want their money spent here in Washington, D.C. wisely. And when you see the frustration that people have in Washington, D.C., this is a prime example of why they have that frustration. So I want to, again, thank mm -hmm. uh, Senator Capito for highlighting this, for su shining some sunshine on this, so that we can get some changes made we are now sitting at $35 trillion in debt. We have got to get our spending under control, and spending on this kind of radical activism is not the way we should be spending our tax dollars. Right. I'll turn it over to you. Well said. Well said. So, any questions? <coughs> yeah. Josh? Uh, yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, just not, I mean, as far as you said, you know, if you take that to a Congress, you would take, you know, roll back this program. I mean, as, as far as in the, in the universe of IRA components, do you view this as, as one of the kind of right to start as a thing you think Trump should prioritize if he well, well? I mean, because he's, he's talking about almost the entirety of the bill. Like okay, we, we know, well, number one, there's there's been a recent rush to get this money out. And that's because they know that there's a likelihood, we like to think a high likelihood, that the administration will change come November. And so they're rushing to get the money out. And you see who they're sending it to. So we have that How in, in this pot of money, in the $3 billion for the EPA, uh, it would probably be predicated on how much is left. We would certainly try to claw that back. But, but at, at the minimum, we would have more opportunity for sunlight here and more opportunity for oversight. Uh, in terms of other parts of the IRA, I think some of the tax provisions, I mean, it was just such a bloated, uh, you know, uh, Pete's talked about our, our debt, we talked about the inflation, 
everybody who knows anything attributes uh, uh, our inflationary rise over the last two years to this IRA and the bloated spending, and then uh, cap that with the expansion of uh, of our debt. So I think um, I think this is something that would be a top priority for all of us. And I don't know if you want to say anything about what we could and would do. Yeah, I mean, when you look at partisan bills that are passed that include reckless spending, it's one of the things that's driving inflation. We've got to control that in if we're going to get inflation under control. There's other things that we have to do, like being able to use our own energy resources to help bring prices down. But we've got to get the spending under control. And so if we have a new administration and a new opportunity, we've got to be able to start raising some of this money in, especially when it's being wasted on radical political activities, which is not what the American taxpayers signed up for. Yeah. Do you, have any, do you feel like you have any recourse more immediately to um, try to figure out what these groups are doing with this money? Like, are you sending letters to EPA or, or the groups? Well, EPA is well aware of our uh, extreme concern on this. I mean, here's a small victory. Climate, Just, Climate Justice Alliance redid their website <laughs> and took all that down. I mean, what is that? Oh, is that okay now? I mean, so I, I feel like we're, our voices are being heard, at least in a small way. Uh, no response from the administration at all. No response from the administrator uh, on this. And, uh, and so right now, we're just, I think our best path is to just shine a light on it and talk about it. And this isn't going to be the end of this. Uh, I, I think this is just the beginning. Yes. Um, so in the past, uh, in response to your investigation of these groups and uncovering what mm -hmm. exactly they stand for, um, the EPA has said, you know, political message or political beliefs are not in our criteria. They don't play a role in how we choose and how we score um, these uh, grants. And they've also said um, that the specific money of the grants that are pending or go out um, can't be used for messaging activities. It can only be used for the specific purpose that's outlined. Mm -hmm. I have a response, but do you want to go ahead? You want to go first? Well, I mean, common sense tells you if you have a hundred million dollars coming into your uh, nonprofit organization and you have certain political beliefs that you've been espousing all through your uh, existence, uh, not just in your social media, but for, for years, that to say that you would never use that money in. Um, in, uh, in, uh, t to be guided towards uh, anti-police or anti... What happens? It frees up the anti-police money so you have more anti-police money. I mean, that just makes sense to me. If somebody's going to get $100 million, you're going to have much more to do your political events or your political espousing uh, through that. And there's no coincidence that just today they've announced they're going to uh, endorse the person who announced them. And the EPA administrators, I like him, but his response to this has been very, very deficit. He told the House members when questioned about this, because they got the information from us, he told the House members, well, they haven't gotten it yet. Well, why are you putting a press release out that these are the people that are going to get it, these are the organizations that are going to get it, if you don't intend to actually give them the money? I mean, that to me is either at the least sloppy or at the most, deceptive and, oh, you got, kind of got caught uh, uh, being unaware th or tried to slip something through. So I don't know. Yeah, I would just build upon that. Money's fungible, right? You can right. move money around. And so if you've got money that covers administrative expenses and you're paying part of the rent, that part of the rent means that you don't have to go out and raise the money to do your political activities, right? So the money's fungible. The other thing I'd point out is that there's been such a lack of diligence from the EPA that allows the money to go to these groups, why would we have any confidence that they're doing any sort of audit to make sure the grant money is being spent in the way that it's supposed to be spent? I don't have any confidence the EPA is checking up on these groups after the, even just seeing the groups that they've gone to. So zero confidence that the EPA actually knows how this money is being spent. And do you believe that when they say that political affiliation or messaging has nothing to do with their criteria, it's not involved? I would say the, the I would question that back and say why are we paying for any political activity? It should be a criteria. You should say you cannot have this if you are going to, uh, you know, lobby the federal government with the money that we're giving you. Yeah. 
right? And again, unless you're actually auditing to find that out, we can't have any confidence in that. Well, I mean, I'll go back to what I said earlier. If you have no, uh, if you have no political messaging and you're not supposed to be a political group, why are you endorsing somebody for president? If you're not interested in the political uh, environment, yeah. Is this something that you've asked the EP Inspector General, EPA Inspector General, or GAO to look into? We haven't asked yet. I don't believe I got my staff back here, but I will tell you this: um, in the in the IRA, the uh, authors of the bill did not include, while they're getting three billion dollars, did not include one single dollar for extra oversight of those dollars. So the EPA has an inspector general, and what we get back from the inspector general is, or from the EPA, is, well, we need more resources in the, uh, in, within our uh, agency to be able to move forward on this. So we did get $5 million uh, through uh, Senator Murkowski's bill uh, of the, I think it's 30 that they get uh, for their IG. $5 million is directed towards this. So that's a minor victory. I had an amendment that would have said we need to move this up to $20 million um, because to try to follow the money of $3 billion, that's a pretty hefty load. And that's what happens when you pour so much money in so fast, it gets wasted. I and mean, we see it all the time. Why don't we learn the lesson of this? And now it's not only getting wasted, it's getting poured into radical activists. So thanks a lot. Yep, did you have a next question? I was just going to say, following up on that, is are you uh, sort of uh, keeping that option uh, in the quiver? Right. Uh, depending on the well, we're not. This is not the end of this. So yes, I think we will. We will pursue. And by the way, nice flower. Oh, I like it. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pete. Nice to meet you. No, you're out. Um, are you with the Hill? I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. There we go. No, you're from Twitter. 